Uh, I'm excited for the Filipino youth and also for the Filipino saints when they get to see this recording and hear your wonderful thoughts. Thank you so much. When I was watching the whole event, the first part, the, the, when the girls were singing Redeemer of Israel, I was bowing my eyes out. I was crying. So I was curious, like being in there, being in that room, what were the feelings that really stood out for you? That is a great question because the truth is that um, tears came to our eyes as well. It was very, very, very powerful. And um, the music was, you know, as you said, it was just magnificent. The voices were beautiful, but more importantly, the message that mm -hmm. each of those, those um, songs taught, we hope touched the hearts of, of women and young women all over the world. And, and what that did for us is to help us feel connected to every young woman everywhere. Mm -hmm. As over the last few months, as we have received so many uh, videos from the young women and learned of what they were doing and saw photographs of what they were doing, uh, it, it was a great connection. And so the feelings that I had, and I believe that Sister Corden and Sister Craig had, were, were um, great feelings of gratitude, great feelings of love, and a great feeling of belonging to something bigger. When, when the event ended, it made me feel like it's really the right time to go out there and serve people and do these great things for other people. There's a line in the song, I Will. It's a beautiful song. And there's this line that says, um, if this is what he commands us, we will give our life. Uh, for, for you, Sister Craven, how important is it for young women to come to the Lord and ask personally what his plan and will for her life is? As you know, our prophet has, has really begged us to seek and act upon personal revelation and to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, our prophet wants us to, to, to hear him as as he has said and i think that as we really try to find out how the lord speaks to us because it's personal you know we hear the hear the voice of the lord in different ways and i think that's why the prophet wants us to to know how what we need to do to to hear his voice but as we learn to hear his voice we'll know exactly what we need to do and that that line in the in the song that says that we'll do what he commands us well that is simply living our covenants mm -hmm. you know all of these young women have made baptismal covenants to serve you know to um mourn with those who mourn and to really buoy up others which really is uh, maybe a complicated way of saying serve others it's not that hard it's really very simple um, we can wake up in the morning and ask the Lord where we're needed, where we can, where he needs us to lift somebody or make a phone call or whatever it is. Serving doesn't have to be hard. I know that in the face-to-face, -face, some girls were doing really big things and other girls were making cupcakes. Mm -hmm. So which is the greater service? They're both the same because they both came from the heart. And for the girl who made cookies and took it to the neighbor, that was as big as a, as a um, sacrifice and as big of a, a gift from her heart as somebody who maybe did something that seems very, very difficult. The, you know, the gifts are received in the very same way from the Lord, he, he looks on the heart. When we talk to the young women, especially when we try to build lessons out of those feelings, how can this sweet spirit or how can these feelings be of help for them, not only on the short term, you know, not only on that moment of service, but especially on the long term? What are the long term blessings of feeling this sweet spirit of service? One of the wonderful things about feeling the spirit mm -hmm. is that we often get used to it. 
you know, we'll have that. Um, maybe we have done a service and we feel that spirit. And the more we, we serve, the more we have that spirit. And yet we become very comfortable with the spirit. It's when we fall away from what we're doing that we realize that we have, we have drifted from the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I think for those young women who continue to serve, they will continue to feel a, um, a sense of being part of the great, this great work that they've been called to do to gather Israel. And they do it certainly in part by serving others. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, it doesn't matter if they have a grand manifestation that something they did was good. They just need to know that they are doing good and to recognize the times when the spirit has told them that they're on the right path and that they've done something to bless others. Sometimes it's not always in the moment. Sometimes it's a remembrance of a feeling that they've had in the past. Service is pretty much very evident lately in the Philippines. Um, the past three weeks, we've been battered by um, two super typhoons um, and the devastation has been really, really terrible. And it's great to see young women step up and ask for donation drives, um, contribute to, um, to uh, service uh, reach outs. Uh, but one of the one of the young women um, I know reached out to me and she asked me, how do they find that desire to serve and that that willingness to serve when they feel so heavy and so helpless and so anxious? I would love to know your thoughts about that. Okay. Thank you. And, and we're so aware of what's been happening in mm -hmm. the Philippines. And we know that there has been a lot of devastation and a lot on top of the pandemic. Yes, and has has really been heavy for a lot of our our young women and families you know, that live in your in your area. But often, desire comes in the doing. Mm -hmm. you now, sometimes if we don't have that desire because we are feeling heavy, just going and doing. Our son used to say this all the time when he was when he was younger, especially when he was in high school. And I wanted him to do something good. And I say, well, don't you want to, don't you want to do that? And he would say, well, I, I want to want to do that. You know, he says, I want to have the desire to do that. And I think in a lot of cases, um, our youth are that way, just because they haven't had the experience to know that they want that all the time, mm -hmm. but just to want to desire, I want to want to serve, is um, I think is a great start. Mm -hmm. And as they, as they begin to serve and see how they can help and lift another, then they will see in themselves the joy that comes from service. They'll, they'll start looking outside themselves, even when they are so heavily burdened by the outside world then they will start thinking less about themselves and realize what's really important. I'm a mom and I also serve as a seminary teacher in, in, our, in our ward. And I can't deny the reality that the challenges that they're facing is truly unique. Um, it's truly unprecedented. These are the Lord's battalion and this battalion is young. Um, they need help. They need all the support, the, the, all the encouragement that they need. What would, what would be one, one important advice you, you would give to, um, to parents and to leaders as well when it comes to nurturing and really strengthening this, this stripling battalion of, of the church? <laughs> I think more than more than anything, we have to recognize our youth for the powerful um, influence they are mm -hmm. amongst their peers and amongst other members of the church, really amongst the world. We have to recognize their capabilities. And, and often I think as, as adults, we underestimate what they can really do. Mm -hmm. And I think the best thing that we can do for them is to help them um, learn to seek and act upon revelation. And that's what our prophet is asking them. And if we can build in them a confidence 
that as they turn to the Lord, their answers will be given to them. And I, and I think often as adults, we want to answer every question for them, keeping them in their infant state. Mm -hmm. And as we allow them and give them our confidence that we know that they are very capable to lead, they're very capable to serve, they're very capable to lift another's burden, then they will, mm -hmm. they will actually gain that confidence and become the great leaders, not just in the church, but in our communities and yeah, yeah. in the world. And mm -hmm. so that's one thing that we do need to, to help them. And I think one other thing is that we keep saying that they're part of this great battalion because the prophet has called them to be part of the great youth battalion mm -hmm. to help gather Israel. Yeah. But I'm not sure our youth know what that means. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it tonight in the face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. And the prophet laid it out very clearly. It's the work of salvation and exaltation. And as we, as parents and leaders, help our, our youth understand what the gathering is, to live the gospel of Jesus Christ, to care for those in need, to um, invite all to receive the gospel and to unite families for eternity, then our youth have a sense of purpose. And that purpose is the same purpose as parents and leaders. And when we start doing that together, there becomes, I believe, a great bond. Uh, when Sister Gordon decided the, the young woman theme, it was such a, it was such a beautiful moment. Uh, and I remember when I was young, um, because it was so frequently recited every Sunday, it, uh, it, it somehow sometimes becomes a, like a habit, like, okay, we're going to stand up, we're going to recite the theme. Um, and we forget the message, the, the very beautiful message of the, of the theme. What do you want the young women to feel and remember each time they recite the, the young women theme? Oh, what we hope that they know when they recite the young women theme is that, that those words, every single word um, was inspired. It, it came through um, a lot of wrestling with the spirit, but the Lord wanted very specific things for the young women to know about themselves and to know about their purpose and know that they belong. What we have seen, and, and this is really a fun thing to ask young women, um, what we've seen is that different parts of the theme speak to different young women. And, and, and to me, that's, that's just the beauty of the way the spirit works. What may be important to a young woman, you know, one period of her, you know, growing up might be something different in the theme that's most important to her then. Why do you think it's important right now, especially right now, to truly anchor our faith in, in, in knowing who we are, like as daughters of, as daughters of God? Well, when we know who we are, mm -hmm. we act differently. Mm -hmm. We just do. We dress differently. We talk differently. We treat people as they should be treated as sons and daughters of, of um, heavenly parents as well. And when we really know who we are, it helps us to answer every question that comes our way. As, and it helps us to make decisions. As a way to end, what will be the, your message for the youth of the Philippines? What do you want them to know at this very moment? Mm -hmm. what, what I would desire that they know is just what we've been talking about, who they are. They're daughters of, of heavenly parents. And that's so critical. I also want them to know how much we love them and that we pray for them every day. Multiple times we pray for them. <laughs> But in, in some of the councils that I sit on and committees I sit on, I regularly hear prophets, seers, and revelators pray for them as well. And I would want them to know that. I would want them to know that they are prayed for daily by our prophets, seers, and revelators. And we hope that they, that they feel those prayers, that they feel the power behind, you know, our, our brethren and, and even feel the prayers that we offer for them. They are known by our Heavenly Father. 
he's aware of them as 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 each each young woman each young man learns to hear the voice of the lord they will be directed for good throughout their lives and i believe that with all my heart and they can come to know as i know that Jesus is the Christ and this is his church. And that um, we can find great peace and safety as we follow the covenants that we have made and, and, and just follow Jesus Christ in all that is good. And they'll be happy. They'll be happy and they'll find joy. <laughs>